this is Writer's Voices with Monica and Caroline. I'm your host, Monica Hadley, and with me is my co-host and mother, Caroline Kilborn. Oh, we are being joined by Linda Agnes. And Linda has been with us before, but it's been a while. Yes, it it's has. It's been quite a number of years. I think, let's see, I think we interviewed you uh, about the, uh, ta- the Amish. What was the title of that book? Uh, we, <laughs> what was the title of that book? Tales uh, from the yeah, Amish or no, something it was, like that. Uh, <laughs> visits, visits. Visits with the Amish, visits. Impressions of the Plain Love. <laughs> And then I think we did one other of your books too. Yeah, maybe Super Healthy Kids or yes, being, yes, and being our own, being our own heroes. I think uh, we talked because remember I was teaching that class of eighty year old students oh, and right, over, and then they right. we and put then their, they came on. Yeah, yeah that was a wonderful yeah, experience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I edited that volume. <laughs> wow, that's right. And now we have a new book. That's right, and it's called. The, Ram- the Ramayana, a new retelling of Valmiki's. Valmiki's ancient epic, complete and comprehensive. And it is co-written with Kumita Reddy, who, who you also did the um, Super did, Healthy Kids and, book. Yes, with, I did three right? Ayurveda books with Three her. Ayurveda books. And Linda is the author of more than 500 articles and five books about the benefits of meditation, yoga, and healthy living. And... Um, we just talked about the three books she co-authored with Kamuta Reddy, and she is an adjunct associate professor of writing at MUM, where she lives in Fairfield with her husband, Sanskrit scholar and author Thomas Agnes. And uh, so, tell us a little bit about this book, Linda. Well, um, first of all, I guess uh, it's kind of interesting to explain it. It's it's a retelling of an ancient epic from India, and the Ramayan is considered to be the oldest epic poem on earth. And it's also one of the longest at 24,000 verses in perfect meter. And uh, But the difference between this epic and, say, the Odyssey or the Iliad is that it's not a dusty old tome. It's it's uh, beloved by, by millions of people. In fact, one billion people in India alone use it as a spiritual guide and a daily spiritual guide. So it's really embedded in the culture and also in Thailand, Nepal, Sri Lanka, and Bali, and uh, in, in Cambodia, and many places in the Southeast. So its influence has spread. It's very much part of the culture there and very much a living guide. And now its influence is spreading to the West. And uh, it actually has many, many lessons of that are um, relevant to us today. So, would you would it be considered the equivalent of um, the Bible for Hindus? Well, <laughs> uh, this is a really good question, and actually, I can sum it up by saying it's it's actually a love story. It's an adventure quest. It's a hero's journey, and it is a spiritual volume. So, um, um, the person who wrote the the um, Introduction was Michael Sternfeld from Fairfield, who's a Ramayana scholar and producer. And uh, he has this great quote, which he says, um, you know, that it's re- it's been called the Bible, um, Star Wars, and Romeo and Juliet all rolled into one. So that kind of <laughs> gives you, a, it has something for everyone. And most of the people who are familiar with it would be Hindu. Uh, or is it Well, at other, this point, yes. Yeah. Uh, but although people in... in um, in ba- uh, Thailand, for instance, are not Hindu. Okay, uh, they're they're maybe they're Buddhists, but they have the tradition of the Tha- of the of the Ramayana, and they enact it, and they have it. Like if you go to the Emerald Buddha, um, the temple of the Emerald Buddha in Bangkok, there's these massive uh, uh, p- uh, murals that have been painted uh, many you know hundreds of hundreds of years ago, and that are intact and that depict the whole Ramayana. It's very much part of their culture. Mm. And it's a universal story. It has universal themes, uh, themes of right action, what we would call dharma. And uh, it's uh, themes of compassion, forgiveness, love, um, of, of rulership through, through kindness and tolerance, and, uh, I, and of how to treat an, a friend, a foe an enemy, to turn your enemies into your friends. It has some amazing, beautiful lessons for us today. When was it first written? Well, uh, Western scholars say about 2,500 years ago, but um, Indian scholars um, and the tradition itself places it 
way, way back, um, you know, much, much further to the beginning of time or something. And, um, well, the reign of Ram actually was probably not the beginning of time, but still back before recorded history. And it was passed down as an oral tradition first and then written. Um, and this is a what we call retelling. It's not a translation. It's not word for word. If it were a translation, it would be three volumes, you know, huge volumes, if it were straight from the Sanskrit to the English. But this is uh, condensed, but um, but it, it maintains, our, our idea anyway, was to <laughs> maintain um, the spiritual wisdom and the sweetness of the original and the depth, but um, but to make it easy to learn and, in fact, to, to read and, in fact, to make it kind of a page turner. That must oh. have been difficult, though, to to be able to do that. From that vo- from that massive volume. Well, I can just give you one clue. Uh, we started it 19 years ago. Wow. <laughs> okay, that, that, that tells me. That tells me. Okay, gotcha. Wow. So it was it was a complete journey of joy and transformation uh, in a very positive sense because we're dealing with these enlightened characters, Rama and Sita, uh, who uh, even though they're pressed their limits, as in any j- hero's journey, they have to they, you know complications must ensue, <laughs> and uh, even though they're pressed to their extreme and the stakes rise high, higher and higher and they face bigger and bigger obstacles. They treat everyone they meet with compassion, kindness, tolerance, love, mm. uh, forgiveness. And it's just such an exhilarating, beautiful um, story. Now, did you start with the Sanskrit or were you starting with the translation? Well, this is a really good question. <laughs> I'm not a Sanskrit scholar. <laughs> I can't pull that one out of my pocket. My husband is a Sanskrit scholar. And so, of course, he helped us. But we worked with the... And Skumana is also not a Sanskrit scholar. Um, so we worked with the with the um, English translations. So we worked with these huge three-volume ones. In, in particular, we worked with Shastri, Raghunathan, and... Uh, the Gita Press version, and then some others that we, we looked into too. But whenever we came to kind of a, a disagreement between the, the different texts we were using, the translations we were using, then of course my husband could could solve, could go straight to the Sanskrit words and, and give us insight. And also he helped tremendously with bringing this to fruition because we, you know, we took about a year and a half to write the first draft, but then um, it was it was supposed to be published by a, a small press, but then that kind of fell through, and so then we had no publisher, and that's one of the reasons it languished. But my husband kept saying, "No, this is this is something that is really good. That this will help. You know, this is something that will go far." And so he helped by putting um, all these Sanskrit the direct translations of Sanskrit verses at the end of every chapter with the mm. beautiful Devanagari script, and that added a really nice element. Uh, he helped with much of the editing and just was a really big champion of it. And as it turns out, he also helped us find our publisher because um, he and Vernon, Tom and Agnes and Vernon Katz uh, had done a translation that, that was a real translation. They are Sanskrit scholars of the Upanishads, uh, you know, much shorter volume of some of the principal Upanishads. And they found a fabulous publisher, Tarcher Perigee, which is an imprint of Penguin Random House. And so uh, when that happened, we were actually, we were about to, to self-publish this Ramayana. We actually had hired Shepley Hansen, our friend, my friend, my good friend, to do the um, cover and design and he had already kind of started and but then when we tom got this contract we're like wow well this publisher could do could do our book too and so we wrote to him it took a year before he looked at it but then within <laughs> uh i finally jack forum my friend writer friend he he said you know years long enough maybe i'll show it to hay house my editor at hay house and so uh you know he said you should nudge him so i did and he said oh i i you know yeah send it send it around i don't want to stop you but i will read it and within a week he had read it uh emailed me some questions and accepted it for publication so it really happened fast when it happened. and that was just last december that we signed the contract so, now at that mm-hmm. point was did he edit it from there too yes, and so yes. you made although because we had already hired a professional editor, uh, Kumana had hired um, Susan Shatkin, who is a fabulous editor, uh, uh, to do it. And uh, so she she um, had had already hired her, and uh, so we already had it edited. So the editor, it was really pretty ready to go. Mm-hmm. And so the editor just said, we don't want any major changes. Uh-huh, <laughs> we just want to copy it. So that was really good, good Yes, news. indeed. Well, Linda, why don't you read a little bit so we can get a f- uh, flavor of the book? Certainly. I'm going to read from the prologue, and this is just gives you a flavor of this enlightened uh, character, uh, this enlightened um, central figure in the Ramayana, Rama. 
Rama has controlled his mind. Radiant, powerful, and resolute, wise, eloquent, and glorious, he can easily destroy his enemies. With broad shoulders, a neck like a conch, and a prominent chin, he has long arms reaching to his knees. The personification of integrity, he helps those who seek him out. Ever mindful of the good in others, he is generous and keeps his word. Pure and devoted to truth, he is adept at gaining, at attaining samadhi, transcendental bliss. With a pleasing disposition, Rama inspires virtue in others. With a perfect memory, he knows the essential nature of the Veda, or the sacred text. As rivers flow to the ocean, so the virtuous are devoted to Ram. Ram is delightful to gaze upon like the full moon, <laughs> mighty like the ocean, firmly established in silence like the Himalaya. Like the earth, he is patient and devoted to the welfare of all. Now, you mentioned that the Ramayana was written in perfect meter verse. Um, are the translations also in verse? And... Well, in the same meter or not? <laughs> uh, I would say no. They're, they're, they're mostly in prose. Okay. And uh, although my husband tells me that, I forget uh, which Sanskrit scholar it is who is working, has been working on it for about 25 years, and he's working on doing it uh, in, in perfect meter in English. It couldn't be the same honest tube meter that is, you know, intrinsic to the Sanskrit text. But, but still, to do it in perfect meter in English would be quite a feat. Whoa. And uh, so, but <laughs> our, sure. our book does have, uh, a, you know, it's been called lyrical. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and it has poetry in it, too, that um, we, so we wanted to capture some of the feeling of the original poetry. Now, of the people who you say this, the Ramayana is really part of their daily life. Do they read it in Sanskrit or? They read it mainly in their um, their own languages. So it's been translated and retold in many different languages, most famously by um, Tulasi Das, a uh, 14th century saint in, in India, and he translated it into Hindi. And uh, that is very dear t uh, to many people's hearts in India, and it's uh, very much part of the culture. Uh, he kind of, uh, you know, he, he had his, a little bit of his own vision. He was filled with uh, bliss and joy at doing this, and it just flowed into the pages. <laughs> Well, we don't have much time left, but tell us about your talk at MUM. When is that, and what will you be sharing? Yes, on Monday night, I'll be speaking about dharmic dilemmas of the Ramayana <laughs> and what we can learn from them. <laughs> and that will be at 8 o'clock in Dolby Hall, and that's Monday, November 14th, 8 o'clock, Dolby Hall. 2016. <laughs> in case you, you know, sometimes we rebroadcast shows or people listen to it online later because we put them up on writersvoices.com. and. We yeah. don't want people going out right, there looking right, for you exactly. on November 16th. And, and like Jim Brooks, I will be doing a book signing afterwards. So you can buy the book there and, and uh, have it signed. This has obviously been a work of, uh, work of love for you. Yes, a labor of love. A labor of love. Sure. Has, do, you feel any, do you feel differently about this than, than your other books? I would say that this book was the most dear to my heart, and I'm sure Kumita felt the same way. Um, and uh, it, so it was interesting that it took the longest to get published, but it, it found uh, a, a, you know, this fabulous publisher and is having a very wide distribution. So in that way, it's very fitting. Oh, I bet. Mm -hmm. I bet. Good. Well, that's, that's wonderful. Thank you so much for being with us today on Writer's Voices. Thank you, Carolyn. And thank you, Monica. <laughs> it's a pleasure. And, yeah. And, you know, I, I wouldn't... Uh, I'd actually like to have you come back and talk more at length about the book. I would love that. I, th I think that would be mm -hmm. really Yeah, because wonderful. there's a lot in there that yeah. needs to be told. Yeah. Well, we're about out of time. We had a very busy yes, time. Thank you for having me. I <laughs> appreciate <you>. it. <laughs> and reminding people again, Monday evening at Dolby Hall, November 16th, for Linda's talk at 8 p.m. And uh, Mom, do you have some uh, parting words for us today? Yes, I do. I think it fits everybody that was here. <laughs> The good in the game of life is to develop your talents and skills and then give them back to the world. Mm -hmm. See you next week on Writer's Voices.